All right, here we go. Last one. Uh, Dave Olson rears his handsome head again. Let's see what we have to say from Dave. Uh, hi, Bill. Not too long ago, I watched The Men Who Built America, a docudrama on the History Channel about men like Carnegie, Rockefeller, Morgan, and Ford, whose grit and vision turned a bucolic America into the superpower we are today. It seems to me that Elon Musk is exactly like those great men of yesteryear, reaching forward into the future and pulling it into today through sheer force of will. With all that said, what is the status of the Free Frontier Foundation? Um, the Free Frontier Foundation, I have, I'm sorry to say, is not dead, but it is certainly, it's not even on an active reserve, Dave. Um, you know how uh, if you put a bunch of, you take a balloon, you put a bunch of dots on the balloon, this is one way to explain how the universe can be expanding and everything moving away from everything else at the same time. But if you put a bunch of um, ink dots on a balloon and you inflate the balloon, you see that the, that they actually spread apart from each other and they're all moving. That's actually kind of what seems to be happening. It's being... Um, Alis! Hooray! Um, it, uh, anyway, uh, so it, it's it's something I would still like to pursue, but there's much to pursue before then. And... Uh, and I don't know what else to say about it other than that. Needless to say, um, one of the reasons I was so interested in starting this idea of raising money for a, for a um, you know, pro just for a space program was because I would like to have seen some of it. Uh, but I saw some of it yesterday with the Falcon Heavy launch. And as I said on either today's right angle or on the one we did yesterday, because they're both pretty much the same thing, um, uh, I suspect that I'm gonna, I'm gonna live to see it now, you know? I suspect that I'm gonna live to see a Mars landing um, because of uh, Elon Musk. And people have, have, com have, as I said, complained about him taking government subsidies. And look, I don't wanna be two-faced about this. I agree, it would have been much nicer to do it without it. Uh, and. And it doesn't make it right just because he succeeded and cool about it. But the thing we have to, I think the thing that needs to be said about Elon Musk in defense of this is simply this. Elon Musk started out with, I don't know what he came out of, PayPal with 900 million, something like that. And Elon didn't say, hey, I'll put in 10 million if the government puts in, you know, 200 million. For years and years, it was all his money. And I remember the first time the Falcon tried to launch and it just blew up and I just thought, you know, a lot of work ahead of you. And there was a lot of work ahead of him. When the, when the, at the moment that counted, he staked a significant, a significant portion of his personal fortune on this without any guarantees whatsoever that it was going to succeed. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep that up with A-List and so on. Uh, basically what I said, if it just says you lost the Ustream, I said, if your father's still with us, please email me at info at billwhittle.com. And if not, uh, do it anyway. And just point out to, um, Erica that I mentioned you on the show. I wanted to talk to you, uh, because I have no doubt it was your father at all. None. And I, and I'd like to send him a message. Um, anyway, uh, back to Elon those rockets were blowing up and SpaceX wasn't cool and there was no Tesla and there it was just a guy who was a visionary. And I've seen a couple of progressives saying, oh, you know, conservatives hate Elon Musk because he's an immigrant. He's a legal immigrant. And, um, you know, because he took government subsidies. It's like, so what are you saying? Um, I think it was, what's her name? Uh, Alyssa Milano. So we agree, Alyssa, then that, that uh, free enterprise is awesome, that corporations can do wondrous things if you just get out of the way. We're all in agreement on that, aren't we? That, that business is the best way to do things. Private business is the best way to accomplish these kind of miracles. Is that what you're saying? Because that's what I'm saying. Um, it's a toxic world out there sometimes. But yes, Elon Musk succeeded, and I suspect that Elon Musk is going to get us to Mars. When I say us, I mean America, and, and secondarily the human species, because... He's an individual. I, 
I don't think it's been released yet. You guys haven't seen it, but coming up, you'll probably see it tomorrow. Uh, in addition to the live SpaceX um, right angle that we did that went up today, mine was also about Elon Musk, and um, and it's called Fun, 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 because I've said before that I think Fun, Fun, Fun by the Beach Boys would be a pretty good national anthem for this country. And to see a picture of Starman there in a red convertible, cherry, you know, cherry red... Uh, uh, metallic convertible out there in space with the earth in the background, this guy not only sitting in the chair, but kind of chilling in the chair, I think somebody said. Um, so uh, that was because th that he did that. He, he chose the car for the payload. You needed to have some kind of weight in there to make sure that you know it was doing what it was saying it was going to do and for engineers to get an idea on the actual performance of this thing. But the idea that he picked a roadster and the idea that he would be playing David Bowie and the idea that they would put a, a, a mannequin in the roadster and the idea that on the information panel on the um, Tesla, it would say, don't panic from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And on the recovery boats, there are two slogans painted on the outside ring I don't remember what they are. Somebody will tell me in a second. They're the titles of two books written by somebody who I'm unfamiliar with, but he just put them there. On the, it's right there for everybody to see. It's not very big, but you can definitely tell it's there. And, and folks, what we saw yesterday is a result of one simple thing. And I mean this, and it's crystal clear to me because I've met people like this my whole life, my, my second half of my life anyway. Falcon Heavy lifted off yesterday and humans might get to Mars and Americans might get there first because one individual person named Elon Musk said he thought it, thought it would be fun to do it. Thought it would be fun. There's no other explanation for it. I know he talks about being a multi-planetary uh, multi -planetary species and all, and, and all the rest of it. But he did it because it, it's fun. It's the old saw, but it's absolutely true. You know how to make a small fortune in, in aerospace. Well, you start with a large fortune, and that's exactly what he did. I don't know this yet, but I don't. I would be astonished if he was already in the black on this. You know, he's seen a lot of explosions. He he, he does it because he's fun. I know. Um, I know Bert Rutan. There's a signal honor of my life that I'm friends with this man who's a genius and 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 a, and a historic figure. Uh, and that same exact kind of person as Elon Musk, a breakaway brilliant person who's filled with a, a, a kind of confidence that usually only comes from really stupid people. It, that's how smart Bert and Elon and other people are, is that they're, you can be very confident about things if you're very stupid. Uh, this is the story of most of my life. Uh, and then reaches a point when you begin to realize you don't have all the answers, then for most of the rest of the time, you're like, well, you know, I think this will work, might work. But when you get to a certain level, Bert's level and Elon's level, I think it gets replaced with, a, again, a kind of a certainty that's the exact opposite of not knowing enough. I think comes a point when you realize, whether you admit it or not, you know so much about something that you know it's going to work. Um, I remember hearing Bert talking about Spaceship One, and I remember him saying crystal clear, he said, yeah, I mean, you know, we, space shuttle wasn't flying much. And, you know, in the 60s, we had, I forget what it is, 10 different launch systems, different launch systems in the 1960s. He made me list them in order, and I did, except I missed one, which was the lunar module, by the way. It's a tricky one, but technically speaking, the lunar module was a launch system, got you off the surface of the moon. In any event, he said, 10 different launch systems and so on. And he said, how many, how many launches were there in uh, 1961? And I listed them, I think it was five, and he said five, correct. How many were there in, nine, in, in 2003 or 2004 or something like that, 2004? I said, I don't know. He said there were five, and I was responsible for three of them, uh, or something like, or four of them, some, something like that. Um, so I remember when he was first telling me about how he got started with Spaceship One, he said, you know, first words out of his mouth were, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to build a spaceship. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. That's all of it right there. I've seen this from, um, I've seen this from executives. Uh, they're not executives. They're visionaries. Uh, they're a long way past executives. Um, and the, the one thing that I see consistently among people who have been breakout successful, not necessarily financially, but in a, in a, his, in a historic way, 
the one thing I've come to realize is that it's all about fun. Um, uh, it, it, it's just that simple. Uh, Elon Musk, so much of what Elon has done is post PayPal. But everything that he's done post PayPal is because of what he did pre PayPal. PayPal is, 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 is ingenious. It's just genius. And he took a lot of money out. So none of the guys that are big players in the space business now, these private individuals, none of them made any money in space. And I don't think any of them really expect to make any money in space. Certainly, um, Jeff Bezos, uh, who's doing some, I don't want to say he's playing catch up. Bezos is playing his hand much closer than Elon um, is, or Bigelow. Um, with his inflatable uh, space hubs. These guys were guys, uh, Elon Musk made his money in PayPal. Uh, Bezos made it with Amazon, obviously. He's, I think he's now the richest man in the world. Bezos can just write a check for 50 Mars missions and still have you know, $50, million, $50 billion when he, when he gets done. But these are people who made their money in other areas, and they're not in it to make money. They're in it because it's fun. When you have that kind of money... It's beyond I don't need to work anymore, obviously. They don't stop working, though, because the reason they're so successful is because they love their work so much. But when you get to that level and you have the kind of resources that are available to them, it then becomes a question of what's fun. And I mean that in the very best, very best term, the very best uh, form of the, of the word. Um, my wife is so profoundly uh, wise about things and has said to me that, um, and it's a long story, I'm not going to get into details about this, but basically that uh, my personality archetype is, the, is the, the joker, which may not seem uh, obvious to you guys. We're not talking about the Batman joker. We're talking about kind of the classical image. Actually, the joker, the jester, the actual term is the fool. It's, it's the fool. And uh, that's not self-deprecating, uh, and it's not false humility. There is a quality about Elon Musk and, and Bert, and I suppose myself to some degree, because the fool is somebody who's depicted as walking along with their eyes up in the sky, carrying their stuff, everything they own on their back, about to walk off a cliff and a, a, you know, a little dog is nipping them on the butt and pulling them back so that they don't destroy themselves because what they're basically doing is they're playing and I'm doing, I'm, I'm certainly, this part of it I can certainly attest to and that the only thing that really interests people like me is playing. Uh, this whole job is playing really. I mean, look at the studio. I mean, really, just look at it. You got Star Trek everywhere. You got... You know, it's, it's just it's just a giant toy box for a kid who hasn't grown up, you know? I mean, it interests me. And because play interests me as much as it does, and because I have the support of the people out there who, who pay to keep these doors open, and also the support of a, of a woman who's first person in my life, male or female, ever really understood me, certainly understands me better than myself, taught me so much about myself, and made clear things for me that were just causing me so much anguish and dis, you know, distress my whole life, and she just simply came in and explained it to me. I said, oh, okay. Um, but, but that playfulness is, the, is not just the essence of, it is in fact, that is the creative force. That's the actual inventive force that powers innovation. It's certainly not the same kind of hard work that so many people do. It's certainly not engineering work, which requires real discipline and real brains and, and, and real stick to -iveness. It's not in any way um, any of those things. It's a sort of a, it's a sort of a, a freedom to not be serious. And this studio is all the example that you need. Uh, 
this is why I, I almost got through the whole show without mentioning it, but it looks like bad luck. No, this is the new um, drinking game because RK so played out. Uh, but this is what appeals to me so much about the Star Citizen thing is that you can reach people while they're playing. That's a vulnerable time. Uh, and um, I'll just go ahead and say this. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, two members of the Stratosphere Lounge crew who um, I'll leave to identify themselves if they so desire, but we all know that they're known miscreants and, and uh, you know, unpleasant fighter pilots, those kind of people. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was. I want to say maybe the weekend or something like that. Uh, we basically, three of us met online, and we drove these two rovers over the surface of a planet that looks an awful lot like Mars. And for all intents and purposes, your consciousness is there. I understand that it's not a real world, and I understand that, um, that they're not real vehicles, but they are real people, and the interactions that we're having with each other are the interactions we would have if we were actually seeing these things. And it was really fun to poke around a planet. We just set up a mission. We were just going to drive 37 kilometers in, a six -wheeled, in two six-wheeled rovers um, from one point to another on this planet in Star Citizen. And uh, I was in one and known miscreant and uh, loudmouth fighter pilot were in the other one. And as we were going over this landscape, I'd take the lead and they could see me, they'd take the lead and I could see them. And we're dodging rocks and we're trying to find a path up and, I'm, and the whole time, the whole time was, um, I think we should go left here. Yeah, I think so too. You see that, you see that incline up there, but you know, I don't know, halfway up the canyon up there on the left, I think we could probably get up that. Yeah, I guess so. The whole conversation, was between me and two friends of mine. That's how bad my life is. I have to associate with people of this level. Um, but uh, we were solving the kind of problems that we would have had to solve if we were actually out there. And on some level, that's actually good enough, you know? It's, um, it was uh, fun. And it was and it was what I'd always wanted to do. I, it, w it was exploring things and going places that no one had ever seen before. So, unfortunately, they're cyber places. I would have much preferred for them to be real places. I would have much preferred um, to have uh, to have done it for real on Mars or someplace else. But that's beyond my control. But the cooperation and the brain work involved, and the and the and the just the sheer fun of it was great. And by the way, known miscreant uh, drives like a lunatic. And one of the reasons I wanted to drive this 37 kilometer course was because it's so treacherous, the terrain's so treacherous, that if you do it full on out, full throttle, you're going to lose the rover. You're going to either flip it over or you're going to get it jammed in between rocks. So imagine my pride when during the course of this 37 kilometer mission, uh, he does just fine, but I flip the rover over, and also get it stuck uh, in what looked like a tank trap. Um, and the reason we went in two rovers was, having done it several times or attempted to do it, I got about seven, eight kilometers before I got trapped or overturned several times, I said, let's see what happens with two people in two rovers, two crews in two rovers. And the first time I got tipped over, we just kept ramming that thing with the other rover until finally we just knocked it on its wheels. And the second time I got trapped in the, in the, like a little rock, basically like you're a turtle, you know, the bottom of the vehicle's on a rock and the wheels are spinning, they got no, nothing to, to grab. Um, I'm with you, Dave Wellman, who tunes into live ATC to relax. I'm with you so much on that. Uh, this time I got stuck on a rock and this time I had, uh, had friends who just came up and knocked me off it. And it was great. And we actually took pictures. Uh, do I have one of them? I might. I might, because it's time to go. I bet I do. Where I know I've got those on my computer. Did I put them on those or in Discord? Can't get to those. I think I got one here. Um, so after we did this, uh, yeah. Hang on. This is one of those times when uh, 
when you're just going to have to wait. Here we go. So uh, one of the things that Star Citizen does not have in place yet is the character um, uh, the character design feature. So every, every character, real-life person that appears in the game looks like every other person in the game because they had a lot of tech they had to work out. Among things like me and some other guys who are in different parts of the country experiencing the same rocks and the same terrain in real time, even though we're separated by thousands of miles. So they're trying to solve those kind of problems. And um, one of the things they haven't gotten online yet is the uh, character um, creator thing so that you can make a character look uh, like anything you want to. But nevertheless, um, the great pictures are at home. I don't have them on me. Um, but this is the final picture we took after this 38-kilometer 30, epic trip. And, um, yeah. And we, so we went from this base to this emergency shelter, just a pressurized tin can out in the middle of nowhere. We did it as a supply mission. And, um, and uh, once we took a bunch of pictures outside that are really cool. And then uh, I took one inside, which I sent to them late. This is it. Is that better? Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, so we finally took it inside this pressurized habitat, and uh, and this was after a pretty epic three-hour drive. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's uh, Viper Check on the left and um, and known, known Miss Grant Mas Matt Lloyd on the right. I think that's it. Without question, I'm in the center because I have a much better fashion sense than they do. Um, and we all look like triplets because we all have the same face. But in any event, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. One of the best times I've had. And uh, there's some reason why I brought this up. I simply can't remember what it is. In any of a free frontier in space and all the rest of it, Elon Musk and all the rest. So, yeah, um, I want to hit people while they're playing and, and, and all the rest of it. And that's why uh, I've got... Um, things that are a little more immediately in front of me. The, the, as I've said before, the whole game is a stepping stone to, um, to the world of entertainment. And uh, I really want to do it. All right, it's time for me to go. Um,